It's the most remarkable story and only you could tell it. I know, well, <laughs> okay, so it's, I'll start at the beginning, but my grandmother, um, when, when my grandfather died, uh, he died at her house and in the aftermath of his death, she went through all his records and she realised that she wasn't the first wife. Right. Um, and for 30 years, she kept that secret from her sons, um, but she wrote it in a memoir and she passed it to them. Then the year after her death, we had two more correspondents saying there were two more wives two and more two more families. Um, so the drama is a kind of amalgamation of her memoir mm. and what we've since found out um, since her death, which was that she wasn't one of two wives, she was one of four. When you were growing up, did you know about this? When did, you, did somebody sit you down and say... No. That, you know, some families are quite dysfunctional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we tell them. you about yours. Let me no, tell we you pretended we were totally normal <laughs> and ordinary. <laughs> and then... Yeah. And I found a little... Um, one day I found a little picture of this man and, this, uh, and he was... I said to my dad, who is this? And he said, this is my dad. And that was it. Nothing more was said. Right. And it was put back into the drawer. Mm. And until we read the memoir and until after my granny died, that's when it all started coming out. For sure, because I suppose there'd be a thing about trying to protect her as well. I think so, protect him and also my dad didn't know. And oh. the fact that he was also working in intelligence, they didn't really know what he was up to or they never asked questions. It was mm. kind of a, about that time, you just didn't ask. No, that's true, people um, didn't really share. And so it feelings. came down to me to ask the questions <laughs> and then... And find this has been, yeah. you've been like a detective. What, I mean, Ian, what a part, what a man. Wouldn't you like to meet him? Uh, I would. Oh, jeez. The yeah. questions we would all have. No. Remarkable. Um, no, he was extraordinary. But, you know, I came to it obviously completely fresh and, uh, and just read it as a screenplay, sure. it? you know. And quite extraordinary story. Um, but in some ways, I kind of gave a, a, a part on yeah. for, for screen because... Camera's very good at sort of trying to find out what's going on under the surface, and he was such an enigma. And if Ruth and her family, after all this research, hadn't quite worked out mm. where he was coming from, then I'm, I certainly wasn't going to, yeah. and sort of didn't want to in a way. It's, it's one of those where you, you play the story, you play each beat as it is, and leave the audience to kind of make up their own mind. Mm, but yeah. more than anything, I felt he was... He was a good soul and he was a patriot and he, he put his life on the line for his country and he, I, without, I, in shadow of a doubt, he profoundly believed in that, whatever he was. Mm. Um, and uh, it's hard for us to kind of get our heads round that in the age that we live in. No, that's um, true, but it's also that sense of betrayal, I guess. I don't know, what you, you wonder what was going on in his mind when he was with these different women, yeah, different we, families, yeah. you know, that's really strange. Yeah, yeah we still don't know quite no. whether it was for work purposes or did yep. he really fall in love with each of these women. Mm. Um, I mean, I personally felt he did fall in love with them, but I don't know whether we have, we suggest perhaps number two was for work motives, but yeah. I, I mean, we still don't know for sure. He lived in his mind mm. and very successful and he was very, very good at what he did. So I think just gray areas started mm. to appear around what was reality and what wasn't for him. Now, when you're, you're doing something, and, and Ruth, for you, because this is your story, this is yeah. your family story, was it more pressure on you? Was it, was it more difficult to do? Yeah, I mean, like... it was one of the hardest things I've done, definitely, because <laughs> yeah. you have the pressure of delivering the story, but protecting your family, yep. uh, making sure all the members of the family that are seen on TV, but also their mothers are served and their fathers are served mm. um, in the correct way, well, how they'd like to be seen. So we made sure the scripts were seen by all the family members right. and that they had a say. Um, and yeah, and then also playing my grandmother, who I couldn't, I couldn't quite conjure her in my mind. I remember when she died when I was 22, so I yeah. knew her relatively well. Sure. And she lived around the corner, but of course she was a woman full of secrets. Mm. And I remember her really as the woman that we find in episode three, not the woman before that. So yeah. I had to go through all her poetry and her memoirs, and it was an amazing privilege to mm. discover and to play and to get under the skin of someone that had been in your life for so long that you you didn't actually know that well. It is remarkable. I think she's amazing that you did it. I know. I have to yeah. say, to, to put that incredible. together and to develop it and Absolutely. have it the way it is now. Have all the families seen it? Yeah. We what did they think? What did they think? We had a screening last <laughs> Sunday and it was amazing. There was 45 of us. Big extended family. Yeah, all the, all the family members from across the, across the country. And uh, it was amazing. It, was a, it brought us all together. We, every time we meet, we get closer and closer. Yay. And we have a family tie, a family tartan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's so they all, all the men, all the boys are wearing their tie. I call them the boys, it's my dad and my uncle. <laughs> no, it's the boys, it's um, the boys, it's fine. And uh, yeah, there was like a four minute silence after it because I think 
you know, watching themselves played out, watching their stories dramatised, mm. it's so profound. It's so different from reading it on a page yeah. or even telling each other, but sure. actually seeing yourself and your 18-year-old self, like my dad, seeing his 18-year-old self yeah. on screen. I, I loved it. I mean, yeah. people will love it as a drama, yeah. but I loved watching it knowing all of these different things. Yeah. It just adds to it. I think mm. it does there's add so to many actually, layers, There's so many layers, so many layers to be watched. Yeah, and you can watch it as a straight drama, of course you can, yeah. Yeah. but there's so much else going on. To know it's true, to know it's yes. actually happened, do you think that is, I mean, it's you know stranger than fiction. And we still don't know all the truth, and that's what's, amazing about the story is there's still things that keep coming uncovering yeah. as we go on. Of course, we're going to see well, you in Luther later on in the year, aren't we? Well, next year, I maybe? can't possibly say. <laughs> maybe, perhaps. And Game of Thrones come Game to of the Thrones. end. Did you have the biggest party in the world when that all finished? About 15 parties. Yeah, 15 parties. <laughs> How do you manage still to stay alive, though? <laughs> no, Everybody else is dead. I know, I know. <laughs> I sort of, uh, I don't know how I did either. I got every disease known to, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was hard. But we, April is when it's all coming out and they'll be the last and they're all feature-length episodes, wow. six of them. It's and, like six uh, movies. We'll be watching six, six movies. Six movies, exactly, well, yeah. Definitely.